Welcome back. This week, we're going to take a slightly deeper dive into one way of working out the theories of mind that we've been surveying recently. To do so, let's begin with two ideas from further back in history. One is Aristotle's idea that we human beings have intellectual souls, whereas other animals do not. Human beings are rational animals, he says. So in the big consciousness versus rationality throwdown, suppose we side with rationality. The second idea mentioned in passing is Franz Brentano's claim that intentionality is the mark of the mental. In other words, the essential feature of the mental is intentionality, aboutness. According to Brentano, all mental states are intentional states, and only mental states are intentional states. This idea was endorsed, for example, by Daniel Dennett in True Believers. Elsewhere, Dennett summarizes his view by saying, there are no mental treasures that cannot be purchased in intentional coin. Now we can tell the story like this. Rationality is the special feature of intellectual beings, those with minds. Rationality is a matter of acting for reasons. Suppose you and I are crossing the street together, and I notice a car unexpectedly speeding toward us. I can stop you from stepping in front of the car by putting out my arm and blocking you from stepping into the street. But I can also stop you from stepping into the street by saying, look out, there's a car coming. Both can produce the effect that I want, but the former is merely a cause, whereas the second method also involves reasons. I give you a reason to not step into the street, and I do that by producing in you a mental state that is about the oncoming car, something like the belief that a car is coming. I assume that you have a general desire to not be hit by a car or anything else. So I count on your newly formed car belief to interact with your standing desire to be safe and result in you making the rational choice to not step into the street. If something like this story is correct, then in order to explain minds, all I need to do is explain rational action. And in order to explain rational action, all I need to do is explain how reasons produce action. In order to explain how reasons produce action, all I need to do is explain how behaviors can be caused by appropriate contents. So what I need is a theory about how some states of the world that cause behaviors can also be intentional states. That is, have content or aboutness. If so, then a theory of intentionality is a theory of the nature of minds, QED. The question then is what a theory of intentional content might look like. Of course, one possibility is that intentionality is a basic or primitive feature of the world. In that case, intentionality can't be explained. All we can say is that it is what it is. But that answer is neither satisfying nor plausible. It's not satisfying because we generally want to know more about the world other than that it exists. Although, of course, it's a good thing that it does exist. And it's not plausible because for many things, we can explain their intentionality. It's not generally true that intentionality is inexplicable. For example, I can make the letters WKRP have the intentional content, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood by saying, let WKRP stand for it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. That is, I can simply stipulate the content of WKRP. Or we can get together and form an agreement to use that word with that content. Of course, those ways of giving content depend on our own plans and intentions, on us already having mental states with content. So that can't be how our mental states get their content, but it's enough to make the point that intentionality is not inherently basic or inexplicable. So it's at least reasonable to try to explain the intentionality of the mental. And by that, we mean to explain the intentionality of the mental in a way that doesn't already suppose the intentionality of anything else, not our own intentionality, not that of other creatures, nor of any deity. We're looking for a so-called natural theory of intentionality, one that explains how intentionality can exist in the natural world in terms of the other uncontroversially natural features of the world. This will be an explanation of mental content that's not question-begging, that doesn't already assume that there's mental content. In the next lesson, we're gonna walk through some simple proposals for how this might go each one aiming to improve upon the defects of prior theories. This will put us in a position to look at the most up-to-date theories. Before you proceed to the next lesson, take a look at section one from Karen Neander's paper, Biological Approaches to Mental Representation.